Just a disclaimer before we get started, as we did last week, we're recording during the day rather than in the evening, therefore there will be more background noises because we're underneath the flight path of numerous helicopters, mm-hmm. aeroplanes and mm-hmm. unidentified flying objects. The traffic noises of the highway that are directly behind our microphone are somewhat more voluminous. So we apologise for any deterioration in sound quality. It day, area around house, big noisy. <laughs> Thank you for summing up. Good. All right, let's begin. Cullen had a problem and a microphone to spare. Thomas took it up and so the podcast went to air. For weeks and months they trolled through every single DVD They've unwrapped all the ones they can and now they're cellulose free Now they're cellulose free Hello dear listener and welcome to Cellulose Free My name is Colin and with me as always is my fellow film watcher, compadre and son, Thomas Hi, hello, happy financial new year (laughs) What? Isn't it still the 30th? It is now. When ah, we're but when this it. comes out, okay, <laughs> that's right. We're Happy living financial in financial new year. We're living in the past. Yeah. So, have you done your tax return? Uh, well, I don't mm. have enough income to have done taxes. Right. <laughs> okay. So your uh, podcast career has not uh, become lucrative enough. Is that what no, you're saying? No, it, it 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 has not become lucrative. <laughs> uh, yes um, as, as an aside It being the new financial year We've decided to monetize uh, This podcast So every 30 seconds there will be an advertisement uh, We do not decide what adverts uh, Anchor uh, Spits at you But at that point you were meant to come mm-hmm. in With That's, some random yeah, advert I, and I was trying to think you, You're not quick mm. enough this podcast is brought to you by grass. Grass, it's 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 green and stuff. <laughs> Speaking of grass and and that randomness, I did go and have a listen to the podcast that you recommended that was celebrating its uh, what ten year anniversary? Was Nine it? years. Nine years. Um, it it very much has your humour flavour mm-hmm. plastered all over it. It could well have been written by you. That all being said, it is possibly not going to be listened to much by me. No, no, Uh, I don't expect you to. I I, I can understand the appeal, but Mm. uh, yes, my my podcast listening list is well and truly full as it is. And Mm. uh, yeah, it it won't get the listen in. What else have you, what what What, have you been up to? What have I been up to? Other than not not filling in your tax return. Mm, not a lot, as per usual, I guess. Yes. Um. Um, <laughs> with me being on an off week for donating plasma, my, um, my week is much the same. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and as for full disclosure, we are very much shut-ins, both of us. Yep. Uh, yep. For various reasons. Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> so why I torture ourselves each week by asking Thomas, so what have you been up to? Um, I I don't know. Got to fill in the front end of the podcast. That's right. Maybe we need to come up with a fill in the front part of the podcast approach uh, in the new financial year. (laughs) Mm. Um, I I don't know that there's much to to speak of, particularly in baseball. No, there isn't. Everything's... No, I I, I did a thorough check and (laughs) there certainly is nothing worthy of note to bring up concerning baseball this week. Everything continues to be weird. We're going to set more suns in the sky. Um, At the moment, this count is four. Right. Three or four at any given time. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, is there any special way in which they are orbiting each other? How, how does this, know. Uh, Don't know. this system of because stars function? All, all, all we see is that they are there. Right. Yeah. 
Uh, are they there in such a way that uh, as one sets, another one rises, so that there is no night? <laughs> don't, don't. Well, okay. So some of them mm. are technically in the sky at all times, having an effect at all times, and some of them are weather. Right. Good. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's I should not... point out, dear listener, that I now have a button that says, yeah. ah, good, yeah. uh, that I can just press during this, it's, this segment. It's, it's not sunny outside, it is sun two outside, or sun point one outside. Ah, good. Or, or continuously sun squared uh, outside. Ah, uh, 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 good. <laughs> I like this button. And yeah, just going to set more suns in the sky, and it's definitely not going to have any consequences like the previous leagues that we are slowly revealing lore about that definitely didn't overburden their suns and right. cause mass incineration. <laughs> okay, uh, on on the, the concept of having more suns in the sky... Mm. I still have not got my head around the actual game of baseball mm -hmm. and have not made the effort to educate myself. Mm -hmm. But in the game of baseball, mm -hmm. when going to catch a ball yeah. that is flying high in the sky, yeah. if you happen to be facing towards the sun when that happens, it occasionally makes it difficult to see where the mm. ball is. Yes. This, this is tends baseball to be true. affected by that? It tends to be true in a lot of hit and catch sports. Yes. Is baseball? Let's establish this. Is baseball a hit and catch game? Sport. Sport, but... Sport. Yeah. Um, yes. Good. But whether the sun has any effect on hitting and catching ability... We don't know, because we don't see the players, and we don't know if they drop the ball or are just in the wrong position. As far as we can tell, defense, just roll the dice, and if it lands on a good number, someone will be there to catch the ball. Right. Are these physical dice? No. So, no. so we do not have a, an official dice keeper who brings out the holy no. relics and physically rolls the dice. It's all no, done. No, just, just hope for good luck. Good. All right. Yeah. So nothing is happening in baseball. Well, things are happening. Just yeah. nothing to speak of. Nothing's happening in our lives. Um, no. Except for the fact that we are here recording in the afternoon rather than the mm. evening because we're watching a fairly lengthy film. What are we watching today? We are watching... Into the Wild. What is Into the Wild all about? Uh, I'm, I'm hoping and praying that he hasn't read the classification rating clauses. M for moderate coarse language, infrequent moderate violence, and moderate nudity and themes. It's got themies. Themes. <laughs> Nude <Is> themies. <laughs> okay. However, Margaret Pomerantz on the cover also states that... Close to being a masterpiece. <laughs> I don't know whether... <laughs> Is that a backhanded compliment? I... Well, it, I... it's also... Only part of a sentence. That's right. Margaret Pomerantz is a quite well-known, in Australia, film critic. She can be quite succinct in her descriptions of films. And <laughs> there we have an example of it. Speaking of descriptions of films... Yes. Would you? Yes. Okay. Into the Wild is inspired by the true story of Christopher McCandless, a young man who abandons his life of comfort to pursue the freedom of life on the road, a quest that leads him to the Alaskan wilderness and the ultimate challenge of his life. And then the rest is self-congratulatory. Mm-hmm. Yes, so we're off into the wilds of... Alaska. Alaska. Via some other places, I think, from recollection. Seems likely. Yes. 
we are watching it on Blu-ray because it's only available in Australia on Binge, which we do not have. And because, we have the disc. Because News Corp. Yes. So Thomas is going to, uh, well, he's not. He's going he's gonna to open the case to find. It's still Eureka. He's going to. I keep Every single Eureka. case uh, on our shelf contains a disc of the TV series Eureka. Yeah. Um, no, I preempted things. The disc is in the player, so that we will not require to flip sides and things like that. Mm. Uh, we're going to watch the film, and we'll catch you on the non-flip side. Turn to anti side A, the the opposite of the side you're currently on. <laughs> anti <Yeah>. mongrel. <laughs> So, was that a story worth the sharing? Yes. <laughs> I caught you off guard, didn't I? Y- yes. <laughs> would you Would you prefer I said so? What did you think? Um, it was all right. It maybe ran a little long. It is certainly paced at a very deliberate mm-hmm. pacing. That that I, I certainly felt you squirming this was my second run through Mm -hmm. and i so i i knew what to expect as far as that was concerned so i i settled into it i think better than you did and Mm. i i guess in that way appreciated i i I will say right off from the get-go that i i did appreciate it even more than i did the first time around so that that's hinting to you i guess that yeah uh, this is a an important film to me but you can mm-hmm. certainly go and and rubbish it I'm, I'm not going to rubbish it i just think it's a bit slow it 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 takes a long time to get where it's going well it was a long journey uh, yeah and i guess the director it was sean penn i think mm. yep um it felt very deliberate that he wanted to pay tribute to a great many people who mm-hmm. who were involved. And you, you're always going to be playing that game of what do I cut out, what do I leave in? Mm. And uh, yes, it was long, but there's not anything that I would cut out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I... I don't think there was anything extraneous in there. It just goes on it a makes bit. It very long. <laughs> Which is interesting because um, the last book that he was shown as, as reading, it was either Dr. Zhivago or Anna Karenina, one of those very, very, very long Russian books. Mm. And in a lot of ways, it felt like we had sat through a very long... Um, <laughs> uh, um, can I ask a question? Okay. Going from what was shown to you, mm-hmm. because it was in, certainly interpreted through um, the writer and, and, and the director as to how to portray Chris, Christopher. Mm-hmm. Christopher? Yes. How did you judge him? Do you uh, understand and accept what he did or was it, did he do what he did? Was it selfish or... Um, it... <laughs> It was a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't, I don't know if I can really judge him for it. It's, it's really a very much a tightrope, fine line of this is how we're presenting him. You make up your own mind. Mm. I, I never got a vibe from uh, the director as to him judging. No. It, these are the decisions he made. You can see the outcomes of those. And mm-hmm. from uh, <laughs> from hindsight, a lot of those decisions were reckless, I guess, mm-hmm. and, and uh, ended up having dire consequences. But every step of the way, you were presented those things without a judgment call, mm. I think. Uh, which I, I found really, really interesting. So, so terribly neutral. Um, mm. Terribly is probably the wrong mm-hmm. word. Uh, so masterfully neutral. That being said, no doubt you have looked into how accurate 
um, the well, <laughs> the film went has it's 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 difficult to say because mm-hmm. so much of it would just be by word of mouth. Yes. Yeah. It's a retelling of retellings. Yep, uh, and a retelling from biases, uh, mm. and, that, and that's where the biases lie. In the 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 other characters, how they were portrayed, I guess, um, mm. be because of the the retelling of the retelling. Um, I'm assuming that the words of his sister uh, are her words. I I, I suspect. Certainly, books were <laughs> were written. There were certainly characters who were shown in not great light. The, the parents were portrayed as as very flawed, but mm-hmm. uh, and, and yet there was a, a sympathy at the at the at the end for them as well. Uh, you know, mm. for for all their flaws, they haven't heard from the son that they have raised for uh, twenty odd years. Um, they haven't heard from them. Him don't know what has happened to him, and it must be a terribly traumatic mm. experience for them. I did make two notes. Uh huh. <laughs> well, uh, there were interesting bookends. Um, right at the very, very start, um, there was a quote from Lord Byron. And I can't remember exactly how much of it was up on screen, but it's a very short quote for the the fullness of it. So it went, There is a pleasure in the pathless woods. There is a rapture on the lonely shore. There is society where none intrudes by the deep sea and music in its roar. I love not man the less, but nature more. From these are interviews in which I steal from all I may be or have been before, to mingle with the universe and feel what I can ne'er express, yet cannot all conceal. So it, it began with that. Mm. So um, and, and all through the movie, there was this emphasis that um, Christopher preferred his own company and preferred mm. the company of nature and what have you. And yet, at the, the very end, mm. the, the last thing that he wrote within the pages of that Russian novel, happiness only real when shared. Mm. And all through the film, he's getting close to people and then runs away. Yeah. Interesting. But that that last conclusion is... And uh, there was forebodings of that where he um, he was unwell and he wrote lonely. Mm-hmm. So. What notes have you got? I, I don't have any notes. You've got nothing. No. I, I don't know that I have have much more to say about it, really. Other than tomorrow, there will be a, an absence of you in the house, <laughs> and you will have disappeared. And ha 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 ha! Headed off with your extensive camping knowledge, and uh, yes, that that one time in a field <laughs> in Wagga Wagga. <laughs> hey, I am still proud of the fact. I was absolutely terrified of how that experience was going to be for you in that one time in Wagga Wagga, in a tent. Your your first well, tent experience, thrown in the deep end for how many days was it? Oh, four or five days. Mm. Surrounded by lots of other people. But, uh, <laughs> it wasn't exactly the wilderness, but yeah, it was I, fish out I of think, water. I think not being the wilderness might have helped. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, um, so, in that respect, I can relate um, much more to the the call of the wild uh, mm. that he experienced. There have often been times where I've just liked uh, the company of nature more than people. <laughs> um, Possibly. Not as treacherous as the Alaskan wilderness. No, no. And I do suffer from the fact that uh, I do not sleep in tents. <laughs> I just can't. Uh, my my nights under canvas are uh, quite unpleasant and sleep lacking. So mm. Mm. Uh, That being said, I, I do know of a number of huts that I, I'm quite comfortable in. So, yes. <laughs> 
if I suddenly disappear. No, I'm not planning to do it. Anyway, so you have nothing else to, to add? No. Um, absolutely brilliantly shot. Um, yeah. They they made a point in the credits of showing where it was shot. And there were dozens of locations um, specifically seen um, and urban environments and, and natural environments, um, all of it just continually telling the story. And uh, it, it, it really is a slow burn, but it is a journey that it's taking you on and a very deliberately paced one that I do remember when I first watched it thinking, gee, that's long. And again, feeling today, gee, that's long, but I'm glad I went on the journey again. Would you watch it again? (laughs) (laughs) I don't think I'd get any more out of it by doing so. Fair enough. All right, then. Mm. Um, But I, yeah. If you haven't seen it, I do heartily recommend it, but I do apologise to Australian listeners that unless you have access to Binge or Cousin Larry has a copy of it, <laughs> you'll have to uh, find some way of, of watching it. But I do recommend it. Let's move on. Yes. Yes, and we have nothing to fill our <laughs> extraneous segment. Mm. There were a couple of comments from, uh, or one comment from, <laughs> Yeah. On, 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 on the on YouTube, couple of thank you for that. Couple of comments from Helen that I don't think. Are... Yeah. Helen has been very very busy and is yes. on catch up at the moment, <laughs> and is uh, making comments uh, on episodes previous that <laughs> I can no longer remember what we said in. So no. Um, <laughs> so and 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 are otherwise not not worth bringing up <laughs> so, so yes yeah, so the, the, these comments have been, ah, ah. They, they were interesting our dear listener got something out of it but uh, that reference now eludes us <laughs> they were interesting comments they were funny comments and then we moved on yes and we shall move on to this segment pick a film for next week so we can go to bed it's Thomas it's turn. your turn yeah. Mm. <laughs> I feel like a couple of weeks ago, I might have had some idea what yes, I was doing. You did. I remember you did. Um, but that's that's gone away now. Right. So, I think I'm um just gonna select at at at, at random here. Okay. Thomas has just okay. shaken the tablet to select a. Um, movie from his list of movies that he wants to revisit in the My Movies uh, app. I'm not, I'm not going to argue with it. I put it on the list. I, <laughs> I dug, Are you having regrets? I dug my own grave here. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Am I familiar with this film? Uh, probably, yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. I'm not even going to hold you in suspense. This film is from 2007. It's directed by Michael Bay, and it's called Transformers. More than meets the eye. Have you seen it? I've not seen it, no. (laughs) Uh. It it has the word protect on the front. Good, and thus far I have protected you from seeing Michael Bay's Transformers. Mm. But that will no longer be the case next week. Mm. <laughs> uh, does anyone have a plot synopsis for uh, Michael see. Bay's Transformers? I have a whole sentence, a whole a whole sentence sandwiched on either side by self-congratulatory <laughs> guff. <laughs> There's probably about one sentence's plot worth in it. Mm. So, oh, sorry. When their epic struggle comes to Earth, all that stands between the evil Decepticons, trademark, and ultimate power is a clue held by Sam Witwicky. And that's the end of the sentence. That's, <laughs> that's it. So they mention the Decepticons, but they don't mention the Transformers. Well, the, 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 the Autobots, the Autobots. Uh, are mentioned in the previous sentence, but that sentence is self-congratulatory. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. From director Michael Bay and Michael executive Bay. producer Steven Spielberg, Spielberg comes a thrilling battle between the Autobots, battle. trademark, and the Decepticons, Autobots. trademark. Decepticons. 
join the fight for mankind in this extraordinary adventure, quote, that's in a word, awesome, delivers more bang for your buck than any other blockbuster this year, unquote. <laughs> uh, I'd be intrigued to uh, work out when, well, not terribly intrigued, like you don't see me grabbing my phone to find out uh, as to how far into that particular year this came out. Um, but, uh, how right. that being said, it's a Michael Bay film, and it does take some uh, doing to out Bay Michael Bay. Middle of the year, yeah. Uh, See, there may have been a summer blockbuster for America. Yeah, <laughs> there may have been more uh, bang for your buck than than that. Who is to say? <laughs> uh, us? What year was it? Uh, two thousand seven. <laughs> okay, Google. What blockbuster movies came out in 2007? Sorry, I don't have any information about that. Yeah, see, that's why I didn't grab the phone. Film in 2007. Which should bring up the Wikipedia article for 2007 in film. That's weird. Yeah. Wow. Why what couldn't, do you know? Why couldn't Google do that? <laughs> oh, I did mention blockbuster. That mm. probably... Okay. Through Google. Highest grossing films in 2007. Yes. Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Uh Uh-huh. Just under a billion. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Just under a billion. Spider-Man 3. Mm Mm-hmm. Shrek the Third. Transformers. Ratatouille. Hey, that, that, that had bang for your buck. Yes. Um, I Am Legend. The oh. Simpsons movie. <laughs> National Treasure Book of Secrets. Woo! Woo! And 300. I heard rumours that there's a new National Treasure movie coming out. Those rumours tend to float about <laughs> all, all the time. Yes. All, all the time. I also heard that there's a TV series in the works. <laughs> We can but hope. So yes, that that those were the top ten highest grossing films of okay. two thousand and seven. So you are going to uh, put us through watching the fifth fifth highest, highest grossing, grossing film, film of two thousand and seven. My bias is coming out very strongly here. Um, oh, I'm not expecting much. No, no. <laughs> so, um, and I, I admittedly have only seen it once. And it might get better second time round. <laughs> uh, that being said, uh, I don't know how many of the sequels are sitting on the shelf. I think maybe one or two of them. But, yeah, he's not going to look. Bum- Bumblebee was good. I loved Bumblebee. That was good value. Um, yes, but until, uh, until we transform into uh, prime movers and... Whatever the other one transforms into. We hope you can join us next week when we watch Transformers. And until then, we'll catch you next time. Bye. You have been listening to Cellulose Free. Your hosts were Colin, who produces and edits the show, and Thomas, who makes the artwork and music. Cellulose Free is recorded in the Deranged Cat Studios in scenic Tasmania, Australia. We keep track of our extensive physical media collection through My Movies, which we highly recommend. You can find links to that, as well as other places you can find us in the show notes. Cellulose Free is a Hi Hello production. Oh dear, what have I done? What have you done, Thomas? I, I had no idea you had put that <laughs> on there. That, that's, that's the type of film that you sort of take into your room in a brown paper bag and watch under the covers and hope your parents don't catch you. Uh. In fact, I seem to recall that there's a scene in there where <laughs> they, they make very similar comments. Anyway, so that's what we're watching. I'm going to stop this now. Yeah, Mm. probably. Seems like a, a plan. Yeah.
When their epic struggle comes to earth, all that stands between... Betweek. Betweek? Between. I think that should be between. Someone's t transcribed this wrong. You'll have to fix it.